So in this video, we're going to talk about how to predict price in cryptocurrency. Now, this is going to be a two part series. In this video, we're going to talk about indicators. And in the next video, we're going to talk about the order book. So how exciting is that? We're going to talk about how to predict price in cryptocurrency. This is going to be fun. Now, this is a video for newbie traders. If you're a seasoned trader, this is probably not for you. Now you need to know that I don't trade for a living. I work in finance. I do financial modeling and I build tools for traders. Now I lost money learning how to trade for years until I started figuring out what actually works. So I want to give you all of that information and condense it into a short video because if you understand the principle, then you're going to be all right. Let's start with our friend over here, Mr. Albert Einstein, because Einstein said it's not how much you know that matters. It's how much you understand. You see, I've seen traders and I've been one of them. I've seen traders put on tons of technical indicators, hoping that the more complex their analysis, the more probability that price is going to go in the direction that they are betting it's going to go into. So they're really approaching the markets with zero understanding and 100% brain juice power and getting no results and getting frustrated. So I really think this is very relevant. You want to bear this in mind. Do you have a fundamental understanding of what is going on with price? If you don't, you have no business. You have no business placing a trade. When you're placing a trade, the feeling you need to get needs to be, if I don't put my money in this trade right now, I'm an idiot because I'm literally throwing away a golden opportunity. That's the feeling you need to get. You need to have a feeling of certainty around the trades that you're placing. And a good trader is going to be right 80 to 90% of the time. What's the overall objective? Well, the overall objective is to buy low and sell high. And if you're shorting to short high and buy back low, right? And really the way of doing this is to try and get ahead of the market. So you want to buy when other people aren't buying and sell when other people can't see the sell coming. Now, you need to understand something right off the bat. You do not have the advantage that investment banks have. Investment banks have models that predict price. They are way, way, way ahead of you. They have more capital, they have more technology, and they have more intellectual power behind all the trading decisions they make. And that's why 95% of the trading days out of the year, investment banks make money, and why 95% out of the trading year, retail traders lose money. This is the reason why it's really no big secret. If you read the 10 K report filed with the sec on like page 244 or whatever it is, you will see the number of days on average that investment banks make money. Now you need to understand this in order to move forward. The bad news. And one of the reasons why I lost a lot of money to begin with in trading is that a lot of traders out there make decisions by looking at the rear view mirror of the car and not out the front window as to what's actually coming up. Now, the mistake a lot of traders are making is that they are lining up as many technical indicators as possible, hoping that if they all align, that the price is going to move in the direction that they're betting it's going to move into. And that's why they lose money. Now, one of the reasons why I know trading just based on these technical indicators doesn't work isn't only from my own trading experience. I also built and developed trading algorithms on MetaTrader. So these are algorithms that would go and back test and trade live as well, but would back test what would happen if I deployed a certain strategy. And so over tens of thousands of iterations of data, I could see over this trading career and also learning development, I could see what works and what doesn't work. And I can tell you now lining up these indicators is not a way to trade. The first one we're going to talk about is Fibonacci. So Fibonacci is actually fascinating in the sense that Fibonacci came up with what we call the golden ratio. And the golden ratio exists throughout nature. You should really YouTube the golden ratio and learn about it. It's fascinating in itself. However, this ratio has been applied to the markets and the ratio basically means. So for example, if we take nature as example, look at my hand from here to here and from here to here and from here to here and here to here, here to here and here to here, there's a ratio. The way people use Fibonacci is they try to figure out where the next support and resistance is going to be, or in this case, support. Now, here's the problem. It was a pointless exercise because price shot up. Here's when we were looking at the Fibonacci ratio. And this is what happened with price. 
it doesn't tell me where price is going to move to. And sometimes it can be right. Price does hit the Fibonacci ratio. And the reason it hits that is because if it's a retail traders market and all the retail traders are looking at that point and you're predicting that point and you get there first, you could actually be right. But it's not only retail traders that participate in the market. So if you're going to exchange your time for money trading, you really want certainty. How is sitting there drawing up Fibonacci ratios going to be a good use of your brain power and your time? Be absolutely ruthless in valuing your time. This is going to help you cut through the noise in trading because you're only going to get what you tolerate. And if you only tolerate good information and having a good sense of what's going on, you're going to force yourself to learn the things that you really need to learn to become a profitable trader. So moving averages, one of the things we're taught is moving average crossovers. And when we look at moving average crossovers, we're told, oh yeah, buy when the moving averages cross here and sell when they cross here and use exponential moving averages to make it even more accurate. Again, I've back tested this over tens of thousands of iterations of data. And guess what happens? You lose money. Money goes down. You can't rely on moving average crossovers. I don't want to hear about price testing its moving average. The people that are doing trading seminars and teaching this information are not making money trading. Guess how they're making money? They're making money by selling you seminars. And the reason they talk about chart patterns and moving average crossovers is because we want this ability to predict price. We want this ability to see patterns. The brain loves patterns. And of course, it doesn't work. If you had this information and no other trader did, it probably would work. But it doesn't work in today's market. So we need to realize that. So the same thing with stochastics, when stochastics cross over up and down, if you did that, you're going to lose a serious amount of money. MACD, MACD is actually very interesting. I use it for momentum. And I also use it for divergence. So this can be a very useful indicator. As you can see here, where the red bars are moving towards green, you can see this trend moving towards the green and you can see the same thing happening with price in the other direction. This is a good signal that we might start to change direction. We might be going into a ranging market. We might be going into an uptrend. Basically, we might be changing the trend. So actually, again, for context, I find MACD very useful. But again, you couldn't trade just by having that information. You need more context and more information about what's happening with the players in the market. Finally, I want to talk about RSI, the relative strength index. Now, again, this is actually a useful indicator if used in the right context, but you cannot trade by lining up RSI and MACD and moving averages and hoping that if all of those are aligned, price is going to go in a certain direction. Here's the thing. It's not always about when you enter a trade either. It's also about how you manage your money in the trade and when you exit. So again, you can't just use these indicators as a way of lining up what's going to happen. Sometimes they can just be a good signal that a change is going to occur. And that is actually a very, very good signal in itself. They might not tell you exactly what's going to happen with price. But if you know you're about to enter a ranging market or you're about to enter an uptrend or you're about to enter a downtrend, you already have a significant advantage over other traders. Okay, so enough about talking about indicators. I think you understand that any indicators you're thinking of using, you have to research them and understand the context of what they're telling you. Because the next video, we're going to talk about order flow. We're going to talk about the fundamentals of order flow. And actually, if you are someone who's been trading, but you've not been successful, I do recommend that you watch this up and coming video because order flow, I believe, is fundamentally the most important concept to understand when it comes to trading. When I started learning about order flow, that's when I could see the arbitrage in trading. And I'm not talking about arbitrage, how you know today in crypto, I'm talking about where you can see beyond a shadow of a doubt that there's a vacuum, there's a gap, and that price is hugely likely. The probability is very high that it's going to move in a certain direction. By having a good understanding of order flow, you're going to be able to see whether buyers or sellers have been exhausted. And this is going to really help you if we go back to the slide up here, this is really going to help you in getting into trades before everyone else does. So when you're seeing other traders doing this, and you're like, how do they know? How did they know? Like, how are they getting in at the bottom? And how are they knowing when to sell at the top? Here's here's how they know order flow. This is going to be a really good video. And it's the second part to this two part series. So definitely stay tuned for that. Let me know in the comments what you think or if you have any questions. Until the next one, take care and talk soon.